Welcome to Boots Buy. My name's William. Today, I'm gonna be diving into one of Timberland's most popular hiking boots. It is the Mount Madsen. I'm gonna break it down piece by piece, part by part, and give you my final verdict. So, let's dive into it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up. Both things are super helpful for the channel. I really appreciate it. So as I said, I'm gonna be doing a detailed review of the Timberland Mount Madsen. This is one of Timberland's most popular hiking boots. Uh, it's up there with the White Ledge. These are kind of the buy for Timberland's most popular hiking boot. Um, I did some online reviews. I wanted to pick up something uh, for some quick hikes up here in North Carolina. So after kind of debating between the White Ledge and the Mount Madsen, I ended up picking up the Mount Madsen. So I've gone for a hike in these and I'm going to basically break it down, let you guys know my thoughts. My first impression of the Mount Madsen, this fits perfectly into what I was looking for. I'm looking for a you know less expensive hiking boot that has a classic look. One thing about, I noticed when I was researching hiking boots under $100, is that so many of them are like way over complicated, super technical, uh, and they just kind of look really ugly. So I wanted something that was more simple, more classic. And I feel like I got that with the Timberland Mount Madsen. It's got the D rings here, the speed hooks. I love the classic brown leather. Uh, the laces are great. It's like an orange and brown texture there. These also come with a extra pair of red laces, which I was pretty tempted to put on for these because it's kind of like that classic hiking look but I just left, these were already laced up, so I just left them like that. And yeah, there's a couple different colorways available, but I just opted for the simple darker brown leather with the orange lining. One thing that's really important when you're looking for a pair of hiking boots is their weight, um, because if you're doing you know long, long hikes, you want something that's more lightweight because it just is less difficult to walk with. Um, that changes a little bit if you're in rougher terrain, like say, you know, California, Nevada, Utah, where there's a lot of rocks and stuff like that. Sometimes in those situations, you want a little bit of a heavier boot because, you know, as you're going over the terrain, you want something that's super substantial. This one is pretty lightweight. I weighed it out as two pounds and three or four ounces. It's about two pounds, four ounces. So it's pretty lightweight. I mean, there's so many hiking boots out there that are like one pound, nine ounces that are like ultra light. Um, but you know, those get into that $160, $170 range. It's like double the price of these. So for me, like two pounds, four ounces, that's definitely light enough. I'm not doing any crazy like 20 mile hikes or anything like that. I'm really just sticking around that under 10 mile range. So that is perfect for me. Taking a close look at the leather of this boot, this is made with waterproofed full grain leather. I was actually surprised that this is full grain leather. I would have suspected with a sub $100 boot, maybe getting something with genuine leather, uh, but I'm not gonna complain because that boost in quality is definitely gonna help the durability of this boot over the years. As you can see with the waterproofing, the water just slides right off this boot and in about a year or so or six months, depending on how often I use these, uh, all you have to do is apply some Timberland Waximum and this is going to keep this leather just slicking water off so that there's no issues there. Other waterproofing features, you know, along this whole sole right here, and I'm not gonna talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the sole later, but this is all waterproof um, except for, you know, this lining here, you can get water in there, but it would take, you'd have to stand in a puddle for a long time to get to that stage, which I doubt that you'll do. Uh, but yeah, all around here, totally waterproof. So big fan of that. Getting into the sole of it, uh, this is made with Timberland's 15% recycled rubber sole. I am a big fan of this, it's quite grippy. Uh, there are some hiking boots out there with more grip. As I said, I'm hiking in North Carolina. It's pretty damp, pretty wet. Uh, the ground is usually moist. And so when you step on it, you know, you're not, it's not, you, you kind of sink into it a little bit. So that just helps, you don't need too, too much traction on those types of trails. Uh, so I didn't really get to test this out completely. You know, if I was, back in California or anything where those trails can be like really rocky and filled with shale where you kind of like step on something slip. Um, that's when having a really grippy sole comes super in handy. So, I mean, for this, I had plenty of traction. I was walking on rocks and stuff like that. So, you know, and it worked fine. I didn't fall off a cliff. I'm still here. So traction is good enough for me there. This also has this gray strip. This is an EVA midsole. 
that helps when you put your foot in this. It's like super squishy, very comfortable. Uh, so I was a big fan of that. If you're looking to buy a pair of Timberland Mount Mattsons, the only suggestion I have when it comes to fit and sizing is that these do fit a little bit narrow. I picked up my true size, which is a 10 and a half. And to me, this boot fits fine. I wouldn't have picked a different size, but it does fit a little snug on the sides. Now, I don't have wide feet. Uh, for guys who do have wide feet, there is no double E or triple E width. So, you know, this probably won't be an option for you if you have wide feet because the feet are narrow as is. Um, and then there are no extra wide sizes available. Here's what I like about the Timberland Man Matson. I love the look of it. It's a classic looking hiking boot with the D rings, the speed hooks. And then I love that you get two pairs of laces, both kind of fit in that classic hiking band. I also love that it is a pretty lightweight boot at two pounds and four ounces. This doesn't really create a lot of fatigue. Um, so that's a huge bonus when you're out doing longer hikes. Number three, of course, it is waterproof. So that always comes in handy, especially hiking in North Carolina. Maybe you're gonna cross a very shallow, uh, shallow stream. So having a waterproof boot is a must in my opinion. What I don't like about the Mount Madsen is that it is pretty narrow. Uh, for me, again, that isn't a big issue, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to recommend wholeheartedly if there are guys out there who have feet that are kind of on that border between standard and wide, or if you do have wide feet, like I just straight up don't recommend this if you have wide feet. But if you have standard, you know, if you never bought a pair of wide fitted shoes in your life, like me and your feet, nobody's ever told you like, man, you got wide feet, uh, then these these are fine. Like I, I have I had no problem with them. And even though some reviews online mention that they're way, way too narrow, uh, I disagree with that. It's not super, super narrow. It's just snug in the sides. My final verdict on the Mount Madsen is that this is a solid value budget pick. Now, for me, I was looking for a boot that I could wear out on about one hike a month. So I didn't have to use my more expensive boots and, and walk them through the mud and walk them through a river or anything like that. I wanted something that I didn't mind just taking out and beating up completely. Uh, something that would be good for the trails and has a lot of traction here. And so I got that with the Timberland Mount Madsen. I'd say that if you're looking for a hiking boot that you're gonna use a lot, you know, if you're an enthusiast, you're going two, three sizable hikes every month, then I would probably invest more because one, you know, you can get a lot more lightweight with hiking boots and two, the cemented sole here, it, it's fine for as, mu as much as I'm gonna use it, but I would rather get something that has a little bit more of a sturdy, uh, sole application and while this is waterproof uh, sometimes you know these types of boots or these kinds of boots can kind of the sole can separate if you're subjecting them to super heavy uh, super rough abuse if i decide you know after a couple of years that i want to invest more in a pair of hiking boots i'll probably look towards danner or vasque those are some really reputable brands especially when it comes to hiking boots uh, and they're that next step but they are double the price now Last time I checked, and at the time I'm filming this, on Amazon, these were about $89. And for me, that fits that budget range. Uh, while it's still like a, it's still a worthwhile boot because you know, there's some boots out there like 30 bucks or whatever, and those just aren't worth buying because they just feel terrible and then they break. So this one, you know, I'm confident for as much as I'll be using it, that it will uh, hold up well to that use. That's great, you know, good quality leather. I mean, this is full grain leather here. So it has a lot of, it checks a lot of the boxes without being, you know, super specialized, without being like the best and the most expensive. It's just right in that middle range, which is perfect for me. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments, is this hiking boot worth it for you? Is, is this something you're thinking about getting? Always interested to know, I reply to every comment. So until next time, put your best boot forward.